This week on Maker Update, a laser-powered lightsaber, a new 3D printer feature, rock music with actual rocks, Pi Panda Cam, high-tech Rochambeau, and why I'm building a Hello Kitty car. It's Wednesday, March 15th. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. Not just another Maker Update, but the 25th episode of Maker Update. 25 episodes. That's crazy. It feels good, though. So thank you all for helping me get this far. And uh, I want to let you guys know I'm over my cold now, mostly, mostly. So uh, life is starting to feel good again. And let's get back into the swing of things, starting off with the project of the week. This week, I got an email from one of my favorite makers, Scott McIndoe. Some of you may remember back in episode 13 when I reported back from the Artisan Residence party at Instructables and showed you a short clip of this laser-powered lightsaber project from Scott. It took a while, but Scott finally has a full guide for it over on Instructables. The project uses 12 lasers, an e-cig vaporizer, two small PC fans, and a 3D printed enclosure. All in, assuming you have a 3D printer and some filament, you can get this project done for under $100. The vaporizer is the most expensive part at around $60. My favorite detail of this project is Scott's use of small set screws in the 3D print allowing him to individually position each of the laser modules for some nice sharp geometry. Also, just who doesn't want a real life lightsaber, you know? I don't care who you are, but this is gonna be the coolest thing you own. And the only way to get one is to make it yourself. And I love that. And now for news. Last week, 3D printer manufacturer Prusa Research announced support for variable layer height. Using the Prusa edition of the slicer software that prepares the 3D models for printing, Users can now selectively shade in areas of their print that they want a finer resolution on. By doing this, you can balance the speed of laying down a thick layer where it may not be important with the fine resolution needed for detailed areas. This becomes especially visible on rounded surfaces where a thicker layer height creates an obvious stepping effect. It sounds like a cool feature and one that could dramatically reduce printing time. And now for some more projects. In a weird coincidence, another project that I saw months ago at that Instructables party was just added online. The installation was called Rock Band and it was by artist Neil Mendoza. It uses a beautiful assortment of motors and solenoids to either strike rocks or send rocks flying into custom xylophone bars. Now, I typically restrain myself from sharing projects like this that go far beyond the tools that most of us have access to, but there's a treasure trove of great info in here you can adapt for spin-off projects. The core of this, I feel, is a guide on how to wire up solenoids, these little electric pistons, to a teensy microcontroller. And this allows them to be interfaced with any kind of MIDI musical software, opening up all kinds of opportunities for electromechanical music boxes or drum machines. Neil also includes a link to a custom piece of software he wrote called the Xylomaster 5000, this program generates CAD files for xylophone key geometry. He used it to cut out custom keys out of metal using Autodesk Giant Waterjet. You could probably print them out on templates on paper and then just use them as guides for cutting out bar stock or wood by hand. Also, side note, I'll include a link to Neil's personal site that has some of his amazing interactive art like a hamster-powered drawing machine. No joke. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I found a dead simple Pi project that looks like fun. It was actually included as a project for a Zipcar promotion for Pi Day yesterday. It's a great way to get your Pi to boot up right into a full screen web browser view of the San Diego Zoo's giant panda cam. The project is based on Raspbian and only requires a few lines of coding in the terminal. You're basically just editing the auto start script to launch Chrome when it boots up, pointed at a specific URL. This same project could be adapted to any web page, really, or any web-based camera feed if pandas are for some reason not your thing. I just thought it was cute. Tips. This week, I saw that SparkFun is selling a new kit called the Rosham Glow. The kit is $13, but honestly, you'll want to buy two. It's basically a high-tech take on rock, paper, scissors. You select one of the three options on the D-pad and then point it at your opponent's board and a little IR transmitter and receiver compares the two selections and declares a winner. The board is hackable and includes a five-way switch, so I think in theory, you could modify it to play Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock. Also, I wanted to let you guys know officially that I will be building an electric go-kart for the 2017 Maker Faire Bay Area with my friend Jordan Bunker from Hackaday. 
I will be showing it off at the Maker Faire. I've had my application officially accepted by Maker Faire. And with any luck, we will also be racing this car in the Power Racing series at Maker Faire. Building this hasn't been cheap though, so I have an Indiegogo campaign up to help me out. It would mean a lot to me if you could put some money towards this. Anything $25 and up will get you a nice big die cut sticker that I'm working up with illustrator Josh Ellingson. Now, I don't have a Patreon and I don't have a sponsor for this show yet. So if you've been enjoying this content, it would mean a lot to me if you could treat this Indiegogo campaign just like a tip jar for the show in general, even if you don't care about the car, all right? And even a dollar helps because I've been thinking about it and really the best gift for me, if you want to give Donald Bell a gift, is the gift of being able to pursue uh, big projects like this electric go-kart without going broke in the process, all right? So thank you. Contests. There are three contests wrapping up soon on Instructables. There's Build a Tool and Sensors ending on the 20th and Papercraft ending on the 27th. We also have some cool maker fairs coming up this weekend, including Grenoble in France, Rest in Virginia, and Dillingen Saar in Germany. There are also the Hackaday Unconferences taking place this Saturday in Chicago, San Francisco, and Los Angeles simultaneously. It's a cool idea where everyone attending comes prepared with their own little mini talk on something that they're passionate about. All three events will be covered on Hackaday's Twitter and Facebook accounts, and I'll be curious to see the highlights. And that is it for this week's show. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already. This is a good channel. You should subscribe. And uh, if you can give this video a thumbs up or a comment or share it, that always feels good to me. And I'll also leave a link to the Hello Kitty Electric Go-Kart crowdfunding campaign at the end of this video. And you should go and check it out. It would mean a lot. Okay? So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.